Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about Adjust True or Set True chucks. Now there's a bunch of different companies that sell these and it's basically a chuck that allows you to dial it in just like a four jaw on your back plate. So you have a special back plate. In this case this is my 5C collet chuck and I got one of these for this lathe because it's got a threaded spindle. Threaded chucks do just fine locating the part along the axis of the machine, but they do very little to actually locate it around the axis. So concentricity can be a problem between taking the chuck off and putting it back on. That's why I went with an adjust true chuck for my 5C, because I want to make sure that the collet is running as true as possible. Now this is a 5C collet chuck, but they also make adjust trues with three jaw chucks and six jaw chucks. And those are used for a variety of reasons. You can dial a part in for that particular diameter and you'll get really good repeatable concentricity at that diameter. They're also used for second operation work. Let's say you turn a bunch of stuff, have to turn the part around, and those other features have to be concentric to what you've already turned. So you can dial it in just like you would in a four jaw, but with the simplicity of using a universal chuck. So the way these work is you've got your boss that sets inside your inset on the chuck and the four screws at 90 degrees to each other act just like the jaws on a four jaw chuck and allow you to wiggle it around. Since this is a threaded spindle it really doesn't do a great job of maintaining concentricity this way between taking it off and putting it back on. It does an okay job locating it this way so just to be sure that everything's nice and true, I'm going to take a really light skim cut on the face here where the chuck mounts, and I'm going to take an equal amount off of here so that I know that this boss doesn't bottom out on the inside of the chuck. I'm also going to go ahead and stone the back side of the chuck here because I don't know if uh, in between taking it off and putting it back on that I've picked up a burr maybe putting it down on something. So it's always good practice whenever you take something apart. Go ahead and lightly run a stone over it just to make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, so I'm ready to take my light facing cuts. I'm just going to touch off as lightly as I can and just go until I get it nice and trued up. And then I'm going to take the same amount off there. Okay, it looks like the face is completely trued up. That was about five thousandths off. So let me take five thousandths off of this face and we're ready to mount the chuck. I know someone's going to ask, why didn't I take a truing cut on this diameter on the boss, since that's what the threaded spindle is weakest at, is maintaining concentricity. Well, this is already smaller than the inset on the inside of the chuck. So there's no point in making it even smaller and then having to potentially adjust more. I'm just going to knock the burrs off that I've created and then clean it all up with some solvent and mount the chuck. Okay, so I've got my chuck put back on, I've got an indicator set up, and I've got an end mill sticking out of the collet. I chose an end mill just because I've got some and they're nicely ground and they're round and, uh, and they're nice and cylindrical. So they make great indicating surfaces. You could use a dowel pin if you wanted to, or a gauge pin, or a piece of turn ground and polished. Anything that's got a good surface finish. Now the mounting bolts for the chuck, these three right here, the one you can't see back there, they're pretty snug right now. They're, uh, they're more than finger tight, but they're not as tight as they're going to be at the end. This is going to allow me to move these adjusting screws without having this move a ton when I tighten up those mounting bolts. Now just like dialing in a four jaw chuck, you do these in pairs. So I'm indicating off of this screw right now. I'm going to turn it 180 degrees to the back screw here and I'm going to note the reading. Then I just have to split the difference between the two and get them reading the same reading. Uh, you can see my indicator if I shade it here. I've got it zeroed at the bottom of the dial right now. Let me go ahead and flip it around to the other side and see what it reads. So 
So I'm about four and a half thousandths out right now and I'm touching more on this side, which means I need to make the chuck move that way. So I'm going to loosen this screw and tighten the back one. Okay, I'll go ahead and re-zero this. Now you guys can see that. And I'll check it again. It's about four tenths out right now. I'll see if I can snug up this back screw. Okay, got it re-zeroed. Now those are reading the same, so we're done with that pair for now. We might have to go back and readjust. So now the second pair of screws will turn to those and all we have to do is make them read the same reading because odds are one of them's going one way and the other one's going the same amount the other way. So in this case I'm just under two thousandths out and I'm touching more on this side. So again, I'm going to loosen this screw and tighten the other one. So that looks pretty good. I've maybe got a tenth of run out and uh, I think I'm going to call that good. The reason being is it might move when I tighten up these screws. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these up as much as I can and then uh, check it again, make any adjustments that are necessary. Okay, let's go ahead and check our readings again. We've got about four tenths of difference between these two screws. So let's go ahead and see if we can adjust that. It's touching less on this side now. So I need to try to tighten up this screw to drag it forward. Okay, those two are reading the same. And those two are reading the same. So that looks pretty good. At this point, my chuck should be dialed in pretty well, and I should expect to get pretty good concentricity on all of my chuckings with the collet. Um, I indicated about a half an inch from the collet because that's where I do most of my work. Some people advocate having a rod that sticks way out and then indicate out here too, like uh, four or five inches out from the chuck. I don't find that super handy because I'm never doing any work there. I'm going to indicate it in where I do most of my work. If you were doing this with a three jaw or a six jaw adjuster chuck, then you should get really good concentricity at that diameter that you dialed in. And the reason is, is because that's where it's going to be clamping on the scroll that runs that chuck. At other diameters, you might have poor concentricity, in which case you just put in a part that's that diameter and dial it in there. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.